Hello, sunshine. This is Joy from Michigan in the US, and I am hoping to do a quick pour today. I'm a little under the weather, which is why I'm home instead of out and about. Um, but I wanted to do a quick pour. It's been a long time. So before I get started, I did, I had several people who had asked how my last one had dried. I don't, I don't think I can get the whole thing in frame. Oh, there we go. It turned out beautifully, it dried very nicely. Not a whole lot of change. I did lose my little crackle lines here. They just kind of blended out, but I'm still very happy with it. Everything else I think pretty much remained the same as it was when I set it aside to dry. So that one turned out very nice, very happy with that. I'm gonna put it somewhere safe so I can have other paints out and not worry about getting it on the other painting. This is a 14 by 18 inch canvas. I'm going to do, I think, a straight pour today. So we shall see. I am going to do a puddle first of white, half white and half black. And I don't even know if that'll do anything, but something I wanted to try. I'm looking for something warm and cheery. So I'm doing lots of yellows and oranges, um, some red, and then I'm gonna put in just a little bit of violet and hopefully that will give us some absolutely lovely results. So I'm going to start with my custom color, which is cadmium medium yellow hue plus cadmium orange hue plus dioxazine purple, or sometimes just a violet, just to take it just a little bit darker. Um, not very much. I don't add very much purple to this at all. So we'll start with that. And then I'm gonna put a little white in. It is really, really cold in Michigan today. So I have my art room door open. So if you hear the pitter patter of little cat feet or the cat meowing at the door because he can see the birds, that's that's why I'm trying to get it a little bit warmer in here. All right, let me think. Oh, let's put some rose gold in. I'm gonna do a lot of metallics today too, I think, just cause they add so much loveliness. And I do want to put some red in, but red can be overpowering. So I'm trying to like think through. I don't want it to take over. I don't want a red painting. I want warm, but not necessarily red. So let's go to our, this is yellow medium, which always looks very, very pale to me, which I kind of love. And then I've got light magenta. Ooh, this one looks a little bit watery to me. It's been a while since I used my light magenta, so I may not use too much of that. Let's switch to the rouge instead. And let's put some copper in there. I need about half a cup full of paint for this canvas. I think I already said is a 14 by 18. So you need about eight ounces of paint to cover that. Now, I've discovered that my chart that tells me how much paint I need is accurate, but that's if you want to completely stretch out your paint. So if you don't, if you're not interested in stretching it too much, put in some extra paint. So that's my goal. This is a 16 ounce cup. So I want over half full of paint. I am going to throw in trying to decide. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Throw in just a little bit of black and silver. I don't want much. I don't want the black to get muddy. So I'm going to go from black to red. This is crimson, I believe. Yes, crimson. And then I have like a crimson orange mix. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go from deep red to lighter. So I'm just trying to go lighter colors. This little cup is, is just um, a mix, an orange mix that I did for another painting a while back. And I use it for my drizzle wreck Drizzle, swipe, wreck, spin. I got that out of, out of order there. But it's been sitting so long that I knew it needed to be used up. It was not good for the for that technique anymore. So let's see from there. Let's go to this, my custom goldenrod color. Sorry about the cat. He sees the birds out there at the bird feeder. I don't usually let him out here while I'm painting because he gets ornery. We re his name is Carl. We sometimes refer to him as Angry Carl because he just, he's a little bit of a sassy thing. All right, let's throw some gold in. Okay. 
And I'm gonna go back to that rouge. Yeah, if you don't like cats, you may wanna watch this on mute because he is just being crazy today. All right, let's do some rose gold. And then a touch of crimson. Oh, just a touch because I'm almost out, which is okay. I, I noticed a lot of these were on the low side, but I also know that these paints have been mixed up forever, guys. So I'm okay if I have to mix fresh paint. It's about time. So I'm thinking that this line that I've just got the paint to is probably an eight ounce line. So I just need to get a little bit beyond that. Oh, yep. Don't really want to put all those bubbles in my paint, but what you gonna do? Okay, this one's officially empty. I have to think for a minute about what I want next. Oh, you know, I haven't, I haven't done much purple. Let's throw some more purple in there too. Purple and yellow make mud. So keep that in mind when you're putting colors next to each other. I really try to just divide it up and then know that I'll probably still get a little bit of mud. It's kind of the nature of the beast, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it turns out pretty still. All right, I'm kind of thinking that's enough paint, but I'm, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to stretch it too much. So let me just top it off with some of this yellow that I love. All right, guys, so here's my cup. It's looking pretty in there. Hopefully it looks pretty on the canvas. So I'm going to just pour right next to each other a little white and a little black. And mostly, I've never done it this way, so. There we go. I'm just gonna stretch this out just a little. Little yin and yang there, guys. Look at that. I didn't even didn't even try, but it sure does look like that, doesn't it? All right. Just want something to start it on. I'm actually gonna add a little bit over here. Or a lot bit. And then a little more white on the edge too. And my white I just mixed, so you may I don't know if you guys can see the air bubbles that are in there. So what I'm going to do. First of all, I think I saw a goober. If you see little chunks in your paint, if you can get them out right away, that's ideal. I mean, they would dry into the painting, but they do, you can see them. So I recommend taking them out when you can. Okay, I'm going to just pop the air bubbles because I know there's a lot in that white. This is an embellishing heat, heat wand. I don't really want to overheat my paint, but the bubbles aren't popping, guys. Okay, I'm gonna get my creme brulee torch and then pop these bubbles and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, back with you. I did stretch that out a bit. Um, I do find when my room is cold, I feel like I have a harder time popping air bubbles with my embellishing gun. And the torch just seems to work better. I'm not sure why that is, but it does seem to be a thing. So, so with the creme brulee torch, um, you just got to keep it moving. That's the most important thing. You don't want to scorch your paint, which I noticed with my embellishing gun. You can actually see when it's scorched. Um, and I could definitely see scorch marks. So you don't really want that. But it happens. It's on my undercoat, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. All right, here we go. Straight pour with hopefully lovely, warm, uplifting, cheerful colors. Oh, 
Oh, I have plenty of paint, guys. Plenty of paint. So this is more of a jiggle pour, I guess, because I'm going back and forth. But you can get some really lovely things happening with a jiggle pour. Getting some lovely lines. Look at that beautiful yellow. The purple really took over. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't expect that, but... I always say I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to do a straight pour, and then I end up changing my mind. See some really lovely things still in the cup, and you know so hard when you can't get them out on your canvas the way you want. Waiting for that last strip. There we go. Try really hard not to run that line out. All right, let's pop some air bubbles because I'm sure there are some in here. There are some really lovely things happening, but I'm afraid some of them are going to get poured right off. This section here and this section here, they both just really pretty, but I don't think we'll keep those. Those will probably get poured off, so we shall see. All right, Let's see if we can tilt this. It did feel like a lot of paint coming out of the cup, but looking at it on the canvas, it doesn't look like it's as much as I was thinking it was going to be. Okay, I really don't like the way I ended my pour. I'm not real happy with that, but hopefully it will look pretty when we're done. Interesting, interesting. I do want it to go all the way over this corner, which means I'm losing a lot of paint, but I can always add that black or white back into the edges to kind of stretch my paint out. I'm watching the weight of the paint. I almost feel like there's not enough contrast in this one, but hopefully we'll get some something to add some visual interest. I don't know. I see these colors. I, I usually get my inspiration from other artists or from nature, which right now nature's in Michigan is a lot of white. Um, I'm going to have to pay more attention to the colors that other people are using because the effects they're getting are so beautiful. And they are certainly not the effects I'm seeing on my canvas today. In fact, I'm pretty sure as I watch this paint stretch that it, this is going to be a repour. It's going to be the second time works out better than the first. I don't like the light yellow. I feel like it's doing some wonky almost like a lacing effect, which can be pretty, but I don't like it in yellow. I don't know why, I just don't. Okay. Oh, I thought that went over the edge and it didn't quite. Let's just help it out. Yeah, not loving this, guys. All right. At all. <laughs> Not even like, oh, if I stretch it this way, it'll be better. No, I just don't like this. Um, I'm trying to look at it and just determine what it is that I don't like. All right, I will be right back with you. I gotta go clean this mess up. I'll be right back. All right, guys, back with you. I'm thinking one of the things I don't like is the orange. So I think I'm gonna try, I don't know if I have enough paint, but we're gonna try to get um, yellows with the pinks. And maybe a little purple. So I'm starting with gold. And then, I don't know if you guys can see my cup. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to set it down in the painting. Do some white. I love the contrast in the middle, so trying to, to think that through. What will that look like? What colors do I want to use? I'm trying to do a little bit thicker layers, too, as instead of... A bunch of thin ones. I really feel like my light magenta was too light, so I really don't want to do that, even though I, I kind of like that color. I 
I don't think I'm going to put any black in. Look at It's so interesting. I do have little black cells popping up from the undercoating, which is very strange because there's no silicone in any of this, but they look like silicone cells, which is, like I said, strange, very strange. All right. So I think I'll do a little bit of purple, not much. There's not much left in this bottle, so it's a good thing I don't want much. All right, we'll call that good. And then let's do rose gold, and then I'll do some white. I gotta separate the purple from the yellow. Boy, I talked about using up my, my paints, guys. That's definitely what I'm doing. I might do this one as a rain pour, too. I didn't mind the jiggle pour, but I think I will try to do more rain type pour. Really hope the rouge doesn't take over. And I really hope I have enough paint. I feel like I really need to fill this cup quite a bit more. And I don't have much of anything left. I'm using up everything. See? <laughs> okay. Oops. I should have turned my purple upside down because I kind of would like to have more purple in here, but it's just the cats being ridiculous, chasing each other. My This art room has kind of become the drop spot for every extra bit of anything we have in the house so it's kind of a mess right now but it's always cold in here so I don't think anyone wants to come out here and try to clean it up including me okay so I think we're just going to top this off with white and really really hope that it's enough paint this is not as much paint as I wanted you know what I might be able to get Let's try to do a little more of this purple. Sorry, this is this is gonna be a slower process. So I hope you all are doing well and staying safe. We are we are getting by. I feel like that's been the theme for a while now. If you are one of my new subscribers, thank you so much. I've, I've noticed you. I see you there. I appreciate you subscribing. If you've not yet subscribed, I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified whenever I post a new video, hit the little bell and you'll get a notification. All right, let's throw some more rouge in there. I just don't feel like there's enough paint. So we're going to do some rouge, which may make this painting very pink. I feel like I've relied on that quite a bit. And some white. Okay. Here we go. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. You can always fast forward through the boring bits. I highly recommend it. Okay, trying to get my ring going here. So you just circle motion which is really hard it looks so easy on all the videos that I watch it always looks so easy and then you try it and it's like my goodness getting an exact circle and not an oval and then getting the paint to come out at the right speed it's a lot harder than it sounds and it's a lot harder than it looks I think you get some lovely effects here with that yellow coming through which I'm loving lines are super wonky. <laughs> they don't look very circular, but I think it'll be pretty. Here's hoping anyways, right? And it always feels like, oh my goodness, there's this is the never-ending cup of paint. Like your arm kind of gets tired and like, am I going to be able to finish this ring pour because it's just so much paint. But you, you will. It's fine. It works out. 
Here comes that gold and white, the last of the paint. Ooh, there's some really pretty gold coming out right now, which you guys probably can't see because of the angle of the cup, I'm sorry. I, I need to find a better setup for when I do, my, like maybe move my camera for when I'm pouring from the cup and then put it back for when I'm stretching. I feel like the gold is going to really take over that middle section, which I don't necessarily want. Ah! Did I catch it or did it drop? I can't tell. I guess if I can't tell, it's okay. Okay, let's pop some air bubbles. Okay. So right here, this is my favorite section. So I'm going to try to stretch that way first. So what it will do, hopefully, it will condense all those lines and kind of move them over this way. And then when I stretch it back the other way, it'll open all that up. That's the, that's the goal anyways. So here goes nothing. Trying to stretch very slowly. I'm gonna bring it down towards this end just a bit. Okay, and we're gonna go back the other way. watching the weight of my paint so that I can kind of control which section of the painting is moving, which sounds like it sounds really easy. Yeah, watch the weight of the paint and then move it with the weight of the paint, but it is so much more challenging than it sounds like it is. <clears throat> So if you are new to my channel, this channel was started in March and the whole goal of this channel was to get me in my art room pursuing art therapy. As the quarantine in Michigan started, which is where I am, I said that at the beginning, you probably heard that, but um, it was challenging for me to be under quarantine. I think it is for everybody really to be under quarantine. Um, and art helps, so I I needed something to make me actually do my art because I just wasn't great about making that a priority. So that's why this channel was started. I'm so glad you're with me on my channel here. I hope that it inspires you to go out and create wherever, whatever space you can find to do that in. I'm really not loving this, guys. I can barely see it because of the glare, and I'm still like, eh. Yeah. I am not a red and yellow and gold person, and I think that's my problem. And I don't have enough paint to do a third pour. The, the uh, metallics really, really took over. So, I'm going to do something really crazy. Really crazy. We've got all these metallics. My lines, I mean, there's some lines there. There's some pretty, but I just, I'm just not loving it. I love this corner. And if the whole painting looked like that, I would probably say this is a keeper. But, <sighs> I'm not loving it. I'm trying to think through. I'm thinking I'm going to switch to a swipe. Do I add silicone? Do I not? Do I add multiple colors? Okay, let me go wash my hands again. I'll be right back. All right, guys, if you love this effect, I'm going to tell you that you don't want to watch the rest of this. Um, I just think it's too bland. And I found with my metallics, they tend to sit on the top. 
And even though right now I can see other colors with the metallics, when it dries, those metallics will sit right on the top and you can't really see through them. So you kind of lose all the pretty little details. So we are gonna switch gears completely. I'm going to add some paint to this. I don't wanna take off what's there, but I do wanna add some silicone to the mix and we're gonna do a swipe. So I would say if you were going to try, if you like this look, um, for, with the ring pour, less metallic, more of the rouge and the violet would have helped quite a bit. So here we go. We're just going to do a drizzle. I love that corner. I hate to lose that, but here it goes. I'm just going to drizzle color wherever. This has silicone in it, two drops. I don't want to get crazy with the silicone, but I do. I want those cells and the silicone will achieve that for me. So, where'd my little stick go? So I apologize, this is going to be a nice long one. Maybe you have some time to kill and that makes you happy. Here's hoping. Okay, I decided I needed to add some of my favorite color, which is any kind of turquoise teal. Type color. So this is called Lake Blue. It does have silicone. I don't want to lose my metallics, so hopefully when I swipe those will still come through. I wouldn't mind a little bit of yellow coming through, the gold, all of that. So I'm trying not to get too carried away, but this needed something and maybe this pour will make me happy. And that's my goal with my art, so. And that's what you're, I, th I think everybody's goal. If you're making art and it doesn't make you happy, keep trying. Because that should be a, a natural consequence of doing art. I, I should, I will share this too. Be careful when you're putting your silicone in your cup. This was the first bit of rouge that I put in a cup to add silicone to. And when I went to go put silicone in it, it was everywhere. It came out in a huge long stream. If you use paints that have that much silicone in them, you will find, I'm sure, that you end up with some really not pretty effects. So keep that in mind. Gotta brighten this whole thing up. That's why I wanted to add some white. And I think this needs one more color. I think we need to add a little bit of just a touch of phthalo blue. So I'll be right back while I go right grab back that. With color. you, I added my phthalo blue. I think, I think, I think I'm going to swipe. I was trying to decide either from diagonal or middle because it's too big of a canvas to go all the way one end to the other. I think we're going to do middle and I am swiping with my custom black cherry color, which is crimson and phthalo blue and it's not coming out of the cup. Um, crimson, phthalo blue and just a little bit of black and then of course some silicone and I'm just going to, I'm not going to be light handed this time. I'm just going to use this up, this little bit in this cup. I do have a whole bottle of it over here so if I need to add some I can. Sometimes when you do your first swipe one direction, when you go to do the other direction, you don't have enough of your swipe color left. You can always add more. So don't worry if you find that you um, don't have quite enough. Sorry about my cat. I don't know what he's seen. Oh, there's birds on the bird feeder again. <laughs> oh goodness, okay. Getting my swipe tools. So I use typically laminating sheets as my go-to tool sealed on themselves. I don't want to use my great big one. It's hard to put more, put enough pressure on it to get the effect that you want. And you have less control. So I think I'm going to try to use this piece this way, which I've not done very many times, but we'll try. You want something to wipe off your swipe tool with after every swipe, or you will end up with mud. And that is our goal is to avoid mud. So Sorry, I should have had my table a little more prepared before I started this second part of the video. Okay, 
So we are just the, sorry, this one's so dirty, but we're gonna drop it into that swipe color and then pull it down across. Okay. Clean it off. You don't want any paint on your swipe tool when you swipe your next section. Oh, that's pretty. It's been so long since I've done a swipe like this, guys. All right, drop it in. This one is a little bit wonky. My swipe tool is, I mean. So you gotta be, gotta be careful. Um, probably not the best choice for a swipe tool because it's warped this edge wants to pop up so I'm kind of having to hold it down which is makes it hard to do a nice swipe when you're trying to hold it a certain way so here goes nothing right you can tell I had too much coffee this morning overindulged in coffee although of all the things you could overindulge in I feel like coffee is a safer one Maybe not though. Maybe I'm just fooling myself. All right, one more little swipe on the end here and then we will flip this around. Look how big my cells are getting. Hmm. I, I would love to say this is why and this is how you do that, but I'm really not sure. My cells don't usually change size as they develop. I know Julie Cube does a lot of swipes and her cells seem to grow quite a bit. And I never was able to achieve that. So that's interesting that they seem to be expanding. All right, if I can do this without dropping it, that would be ideal. And without getting paint all over me. All right. Oh, there is a huge goober on this side. Let me get that off. I don't wanna you could leave it, like I said earlier, but you're gonna see it in the finished product and it's just not pretty. Okay. You guys, if you're still with me, thank you so much for being so patient as I try to work this one out. I keep doing that. I get to the end and I just put too much pressure on and I'm getting all the way down to the canvas, which I really, really don't want. Um, so just watch as you get to the edge if you struggle with that like I am. I feel like this canvas has way too much paint on it, so we'll see. It may not, it may not dry correctly. So I'll have to let you know in my next video how this one held up, how it dries, and all of that wonderfulness. There, that was better at the end. I managed to lift a little bit. Hmm, I'm really not loving this one either, guys, but I'm not redoing it again. <laughs> I'm drawing the line. I'm, I have to at some point say, and I'm done. Maybe somebody will love this more than I do. I do think I may wreck it just to see what that looks like. Since it's not one I love, I don't know, I feel like when I'm, when I'm not in love with something, I, I'm a little more bold about tweaking it. So, all right, I have some paint bottles in the way. Goodness sakes, guys, I'm so sorry. Today I feel like I'm just a hot mess. I think I'm gonna go after this video and take a little nap. Let's see if that helps me feel some better. Here's hoping, right? Get some rest, get some water. Okay. I've got some lovely cells, I really do. And I feel like there's just so much paint on this canvas though, I'm not sure it's gonna dry correctly, but we'll see. I am gonna go ahead and wreck it. I don't have a spinner that's gonna be able to spin a canvas this large, so. I'll just have to work with what I have. This black line here, I don't love. Um, well, let me put some heat on it first and see if we get some cells that pop up in it. Just in this middle section, especially right there. You don't wanna burn the paint, but. Okay. All 
All right, here goes nothing. I'm going to do Kathy Miller style wrecking and hopefully it works out okay. I actually think I want to switch to a popsicle stick that's got a little more. I can go all the way down. So you're seeing canvas there. Don't let that worry you. That paint will close back in on itself. It's going to take a minute because it's warm or it's cold out here, but I wanted kind of a thicker line in the middle. I don't know what it's going to do as it closes back together. It is very tempting to help it by stretching it, but keep in mind that if I start to tilt this, all of these little cells are going to change and it may be a good change or it may be a bad change. So it depends on how bold you want to be. I really, really hate this yellow over here. Let's see if I can just hide that. There we go. I like that much better. All right, here goes nothing guys. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to draw lines through the cells. It'll kind of change their shape, which I, that's what I want. And it'll drag some other colors around. It may just make a mess of the canvas, but if nothing else, it's a chance for me to practice my techniques. So when I have a canvas that I'm just like, ugh, not, not digging it, it's, it's fantastic to practice on. And I would say this is definitely one of those, so I apologize. I don't feel like I created anything special for you today. I created a hot mess. So I'm just um, kind of following whatever my little heart desires. I have no rhyme or reason as far as where I put my lines. It's just whatever I, whatever I feel. And I'm, I'm making sure to clean my skewer after every time. Like I said earlier, this, this is a lot of paint on this canvas. It may not dry correctly. So I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know. All right, guys. I may do a couple more lines here and there, but this video has gotten long enough. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have at least learned something or been encouraged to go try your own or looked at it and gone, oh, I could do better than that. Let me know. Let me know what you come up with. I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. What should I have done differently? Probably less metallics would have been a good start. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear from you. All right, guys, thanks so very much. I will see you on the next one.